What's going on guys? I'm going to take you through the top 10 best sorceries in Elden Ring after patch 1.10. If your list differs, leave it down in the comments below. Remember, this is my personal opinion. With over 2,000 hours in Elden Ring, I feel like I know what works and what doesn't work, but I always want to hear your all's feedback. So, I'll see you guys in the comments. I go through every single one. I'm excited to get into the video. Let's go ahead and jump into the top 10. Coming in at our 10th slot, we have Ancient Death Rancor. This is going to be a sorcery that is going to allow 9 Vengeful Spirits to be spam casts out towards your enemy, surrounding them and doing a very decent amount of damage, as well as stun locking them to the point where they pretty much can't move. Now, this is really good against smaller and middle sized enemies, but it has been known to do some decent damage against bosses as well. So, allowing yourself to equip the Godfrey icon is going to make this sorcery hit even harder. And if you haven't noticed from the clips you've seen so far, all the vengeful spirits are going to track your enemy. And when there's a bunch of enemies in one area, it's going to track out different enemies and hit a ton of different people at one time. And since it does track, that means it is really fun to use in PvP and can keep your enemies at bay while constantly bombarding them and spamming them with a ton of different Vengeful Spirit Skulls. With an FP cost of 21, this definitely is a fantastic sorcery to use and is why it's getting a number 10 slot on our list. Coming in at slot number 9, we have Glintstone Ice Crag. This is a very low FP cost sorcery and it builds up Frost incredibly fast. Usually between 3 and 4 hits, you are going to have a frost proc on your enemy, allowing you to take a huge chunk of damage down, and considering frost is one of the most powerful affinities in Elden Ring, this was a no-brainer for this list. I absolutely love using this sorcery because it's super spammable, it does a decent amount of damage, and you can usually kill the majority of enemies in Elden Ring before they even get to you. However, if there is one downside to this sorcery, it's the fact that the range on this sorcery is actually pretty small. I've noticed in my time playing with it that you actually have to sit there and get a little bit closer to your enemy than most other non-melee sorceries in Elden Ring. You can boost this sorcery's damage with the Frost Witch Hat by 10%, so that's definitely something you want to put on top of this sorcery, but overall this is a great sorcery to use, and it's definitely earned its number 9 slot. Cannon of Hayama is going to come in at our 8th slot, and I absolutely love this sorcery. It packs a massive punch, you're going to do a ton of damage, and it's also going to hit your enemies if they're behind a wall, or if they're above you, it will go through the floor with its explosion, and it will actually hit them as well. I have noticed this is a really awesome sorcery to use if you are looking to set up and launch a ton of attacks from range before your enemy can close in on you, because once your enemy closes in, this can be a little bit more difficult to use, but nonetheless, you are going to do a crazy amount of damage with it. Now, this is another sorcery on the list that can be affected by the Godfrey Icon, which means you're going to be getting 15% increased damage to charge spells, so you're going to be pumping up the damage of this massive explosion even farther. It's going to have a medium-sized FP cost at 38, and it's also going to do a decent amount of stamina damage to guarding enemies. Overall, with the massive damage you can put out with this sorcery, it's definitely one you need to add to your list, and it's why it has secured a slot on mine. Now, Star's Ruin is our first legendary sorcery when it comes to Elden Ring and this top 10 list. This is a very fun sorcery to use that can be charged to 30% increased damage. Now the interesting thing about this particular sorcery is that it used to be incredibly overpowered and the tracking on Stars of Ruin was absolutely incredible. However, somewhere around 1.7 or 1.8 this got nerfed so the tracking isn't as good. However, it is still there and it is still noticeable. I definitely recommend using this sorcery. It is decent against bosses, but but this sorcery is really good against smaller and medium-sized enemies with an Elden Ring because it typically is just going to take one cast to kill anything you could possibly dream of. Now, depending on what setup you're running, the FP cost of this sorcery can get pretty high. Its original cost is 32, but if you add Lusat's Glenstone Staff, that's going to add to it as well. So, overall, you're not going to have a ton of casts with this sorcery, but the casts that you do have are going to, in fact, do some decent damage. And between the tracking, the ability to be boosted by the Godfrey Icon to get even more damage out of this sorcery and the multi-hit nature of this sorcery is what lands it right here on our list. Now in our sixth slot on our top 10 list we have Adula's Moonblade. I absolutely love this sorcery. It's incredibly versatile. Not only does it have a huge slashing frost sword but you're also going to get a frost projectile that has a decent range on it that's going to also build up 
frost damage on your enemy. As stated before, frost is one of the most powerful affinities in all of Elden Ring, so to have a sorcery that builds on that is absolutely phenomenal, and the fact that you can cast this pretty quickly is also a nice plus. With the most recent patches reducing the FP consumption from 26 to 22, this is definitely a sorcery you want to add to your arsenal, especially if you are looking at building a frost sorcerer. You can boost the damage with the carrion glintstone staff, as well as equipping the snow witch hat, which you see right here on the screen, and it's just going to allow you to do oh so much more damage, which everybody absolutely wants. Now, a sorcery list would not be complete if it did not have Comet Azure in it. However, it's only going to make it to the top five in our fifth slot because, as you can see from the clips I'm showing you here, if your target moves at all, you are going to completely miss. This is an absolutely phenomenal sorcery for big enemies that don't move around very fast or that are very slow and lumbering. However, anything that has any type of agility at all, this is going to be completely useless against, at least after the first initial blast of damage. However, that being said, if you are up against something like an Erdtree Avatar, this sorcery is going to shred them to absolute pieces. It's a very good sorcery when it comes to damage, maybe one of the highest damaging sorceries in the game. However, as I stated before, it is very situational and it's not the powerhouse that it used to be when the game was first released two years ago. Now, a really nice thing about the Comet Azure is you can boost the damage with Jellyfish Shield, the Azure's Glintstone Crown, as well as the Godfrey Icon and a few other talismans, and the Flask of Wonders Physic that goes along with it can really make this thing absolutely shatter bosses. However, as stated before, it just isn't what it used to be and with the bosses that can dodge pretty easily, this can be absolutely useless against. Now, in our fourth slot on our top 10 list, we are going to have Rock Sling. Even though this is a very elementary sorcery and you can get it very early in the game, which most people end up doing, the stagger potential, the tracking, and the overall physical damage that this sorcery does is really awesome and cannot be overlooked. In fact, since it does deal physical damage, you can equip the Stance Break tier to make Stance Break even easier on enemies and most bosses within Elden Ring. Roxling has an FP cost of 18 and you can boost the damage with the Meteorite Staff that you can find in Kaelid. And if you're trying to boost the range, you can do that too with the Arrow's Reach Talisman, which does affect this particular sorcery. Now, the reason Roxling isn't any higher on our list is because of the time it takes to cast. Although it looks like it is a chargeable sorcery, it is not. It just has a long animation to get your rocks finally moving towards your enemy. But with that being said, that is a minor gripe and you can look for the windows of opportunity in which to use this sorcery best, so I highly recommend it, and it's why it made it on this list at number four. Moving into our top three, we are going to start the top three off with Carrion Piercer. This is a fantastic sorcery you're going to be doing a ton of damage with, and you can also boost this sorcery with things like Rotwing Sword Insignia, Godskin Swaddling Cloth, or the Milson's Prosthesis. It is a really fun sorcery to use. It's awesome for PvP when it comes to roll catching or just overall output of damage, and it does have some very good stagger as well. There are two separate types of attacks the Carrion Piercer can offer you, the first of which is just a very quick trigger press, and that's going to allow you to thrust the Piercer out really quickly, and then you can charge the Piercer up for more damage and usually knock down most of your enemies. It has a very small FP cost at just 17, and it can be boosted by things like the Carrion Glintstone Staff, and can be used back to back with sorceries like the Carrion Greatsword. It's an absolutely phenomenal sorcery to use, it goes very well with most builds, and if you're not using it, you definitely should, because this is going to add a whole different level of damage to your arsenal. Now for slot number two, we have definitely one of my favorite sorceries to use in any sorcery build, and that is the Carrion Slicer. There is nothing that can be said that is terrible about this sorcery. It is so good, you do a ton of damage with it, and the fact that you can attack super quickly is going to allow you to burn most bosses down with no problem at all. This sorcery is going to proc Milson's Prosthesis and Rotwing's Sword Insignia, so you can treat this type of sorcery build as if you were playing a dex build, and things can get very interesting and very fun. This sorcery has a low FP cost of 4, which makes it absolutely ridiculous at how little FP you're going to use while you get a ton of damage damage out of a sorcery. It can be boosted by the Carrion Glintstone staff to do more damage, and overall this is definitely one of the best sorceries in the entire game in my opinion. And lastly, at spot number one, we have in my opinion the best sorcery in the entire game, 
Night Comet. This sorcery has the ability to make this game so incredibly easy because of the amount of damage that you can stack into this particular sorcery. If you use the Staff of Loss, you're going to get a 30% increase in its damage, but if you use two Staffs of Loss, you will get a 60% increase in damage, not to mention all the talismans you can stack to boost your magic damage. This sorcery is absolutely broken, and it is chargeable, which means you can get even more damage out of it with the Godfrey Icon. It makes bosses an absolute cakewalk, and overall, this is such a versatile and awesome sorcery because you can either charge it or use it very quickly and either way you're going to be getting a really decent slash insane amount of damage out of this sorcery so guys there you have it that is our top 10 list of the best sorceries in Elden Ring after patch 1.10 if you agree or disagree with the list let me know down in the comments below any sorceries that you feel should have made the list I would love to know about I answer every single comment love talking to you guys if you've not subscribed feel free to hit the subscribe and the bell notification on your way out it does a ton for the channel. I also stream on Tuesday night, so if you want to come see me make some of these builds, play through Elden Ring, any kind of that stuff, that's what's going on on Tuesday nights. And until next time, guys, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you in the next one.